Welcome to another video from Doc's Lock. What we have on the bench today is this one. Can you see it? Okay, so this is the Dolphin XP007 made by X-Horse. It is a duplicator with inbuilt battery and I'll take over a couple of the specs on it here. Battery capacity uh, 64.75 WH, which is a funny way of saying it, normally we're talking amps. Charge voltage 18, sorry 12 to 18 volts, so you can just plug it straight in from your car. Consumption 120 watts. Uh, motor speed, we got highest is 13,000 RPM, lowest is 7,000 RPM, middle of the range is 10,000 RPM. Uh, we got torque of 0.12 Newton meters, switch to 0.16 Newton meters, travel of spindle 25 millimeters, travel of table 36 mil by 48, working temperature 0 degrees to 50 degrees, it's no indication of Celsius or whatnot, but working humidity, so if it's too humid, might not work, 10 to 90 percent. Package dimensions are 380 by 340 by 360 mil. Machine di dimensions 280 by 247 by 355 mil. Net weight 11.5 kilos, gross weight 14 in the box. Okay, so that gets that out of the way. A few other things will go over there. All right, so it comes in a box like this. Instructions, we'll go over them. Styrofoam, oh, get out of the box. Okay, now it's not gonna work, it's taped up. Just have to rip it out. It's refusing to leave its home. Okay, that's a big bit of styrofoam. That's out of the way. Okay, now we just need something to slice it open. I wasn't prepared to need to slice it. Oh, there we go, box cutter. One, two, three, four. Okay, because it is big and chunky, you can't see too much, but I uh, can do that now. Okay, first first thing out of the box, we have our power pack. Let's have a look and see what's going on with the power pack. Okay, so it's the standard kettle plug right there, so you can plug that in, same as the computers or the kettle. On the other side, you have what looks to be just your standard uh, pin there, nothing much. And the output voltage on this, so you can put in 100 to 240 AC volts. So if you're in America, you can just plug it in. If you're in Australia, you can just plug it in. You're in the UK, you can just plug it in. Um, so it doesn't matter what voltage you put in here, as long as it's between 100 and 240, you're good. Output voltage is 24 volts at 5 amps. So it's a pretty much the same as a laptop charger. Anyway, but you can use 12 volt on this. So there's my plug right there. You've got the Australian configuration, you've got that configuration. Oh, we even get a paintbrush. Yeah! Original OEM spec Condor paintbrush. Woohoo! Okay, looking over the tools here, let's go over them because they, they've got a little bit of something in them. Alright, out with all the tools. Oh, and loose scrub screws. Okay, so Allen key, Allen key, Allen key. Uh, we have a blade there. Another blade. Are these different sizes? Because they do come in different sizes. Yeah, we do. We have uh, 2.5 mil and 1.5 mil by 6 mil diameter shaft by 40 long and then 40 long. So, and then it's got 3F, which is probably the the grooves on the cutter. We have two very little grub screws there, which are going to be easy to lose. We have what looks to be like a, a just an O-ring and another O-ring. They're obviously going to be belt somewhere along the line. And we have um, a double-sided uh, what do they call it? Double sided uh, probe. So that's for the tracing side of it. Put in one way, turn around, put in the other way. These can break too, you've got to be very careful with them. We have two little parts here used for lining the key. We have two shoulders here are used for some of the newer keys where they don't sit properly in the standard vise. So you put one on and you'll be able to hold it. They've included a Honda key blade here, which is obviously just a little. Um, maybe a calibration or orientation type thing or an example that it's been tested. In the box, which is not needed whatsoever, is these two travel um, travel adapters and uh, that's the Australian plug on there and you just plug in whatever. But they gave us the right size plug, so they're just rubbish. All right, let's look at the instructions now. Dolphin XP007. Okay, now it's all in Chinese, so you're not gonna get much out of it. The only thing I can read is the top key cutting machine Dolphin and where it says Dolphin, everything else were in Chinese. We do have the parts list which we can identify. 
uh, so that's pretty good. It looks like there's some sort of online thing here too, but once again, we can't know what that is unless we go online because it's all in all in Chinese. So here's the box, here's the duplicator, yes. Okay, so we've got the power switch on the side, the down plunge, the calibration, uh, it's passed something or other, that's good. Oh, this tells us uh, about the depth and uh, adjusting the depth, but we don't know. So we can only really use it from pictures, and I like pictures, because, you know, chances are I look at the pictures more than I read the stuff anyway. So being in Chinese, probably not too big a problem for me. Now, it does take a fuse in the back. I didn't see any fuse included there, that's unusual. A lot of key machines always include a fuse. Uh, they're showing me an uh, example of how to line it up. They're showing me how to use those extra jaw, that extra piece in the jaws. That's cool. That's cool. And shows me all the different types of uh, keys that it can do. All right. So the reason we bought this key machine, I know we've got digital key machines in our car, but the reason we bought this key machine is because a lot of the time it's easier just to duplicate a key than it is to use a computerized key machine and decode it and cut it back to code. So if you just want to make a quick duplicate, you could just throw in a blank, throw in the original, and you're good to go. If you've got to decode it each and every time, if the customer's key, which is like a track key like this, a lot of the time the customers do all sorts of things with their key, they don't really look after them, they're in their pocket, they get all sorts of sticky stuff and food in their pocket, and these little grooves right here where it needs to actually use to decode, a lot of the time those, the probe can go in there and get a, hit by a bit of dirt and not get a good contact. So all these electronic key machines, CNC type ones, they all use contact on the metal surface and basically yeah if you don't have good contact you can get slowed down or, or break your little stylus probe. So by having a duplicator you're guaranteed to always have that backup of being able to duplicate a key quickly, fast and effectively um, you know just for a duplicate. Alright so looking at the machine now on the side here we have our, our handle here which is going to operate the cradle forwards and uh, so X and Y type of axes. On this side here, I'm noticing they've put a big huge uh, nut in here and that is where our plunge handle will screw in, so we'll put that in there. They've actually used a cable tie on this side here, which is really cool, so the whole cradle's not going around. And we're just going to remove that with a little... Oop, there we go. It's been removed. On the front here, you can see you've got this little tightening one. That's basically to um, lock the carriage. So let's go through and do that. Okay, that's, that's coming out. So they pack it very well. They even put a bolt in this hole, which I don't see as necessary. So x you can save yourself a, you know, a million bucks per year by not putting that bolt in. Because in the packaging, nothing else is going to fall in there. Just put a bit of sticky tape on it. It's good enough. Okay, so now here, here we have it. On the side, we have our speed controller off, on, one, and two position. This should adjust our height and depth, and it's extremely tight. So I have to find out why it is so tight. Okay, so basically I tightened it all the way tight and I couldn't move it, so I backed it off. Now I can move it nicely. So let's have a look at its distance here. If we can go side on. Actually, I'll go, I'll go this way. I'll go this side. Okay, so you can see it there. Alright, so that's normal when you pull the handle down. You can see it. And that touches all the way down to the jaws. Now these jaws as well, something unique about these is it could actually do gem keys. That was something unique. And the actual jaws themselves, let's take them out and have a look at them, if we can do that. Because I reckon they'll be interesting to look at. Here. So there's this uh, screw at the front. There we go, that's not so bad. Take this one out here. And I'm going to have to recalibrate all this again shouldn't be too hard. Okay, will that do that? Okay, so they didn't give me the Allen key for this. Can I slide the jaws now? Oh, we can. Hallelujah. Okay, so you see there's a little notch here. This is jaw two, that is jaw three. I don't know, normally it should be, okay, one, two, and three. So that's unusual, normally it's jaw one and jaw two. Uh, there's a little notch here, and there is a little calibration right here. I'll show you that. If you can see that little slide, there's like a little ruler there. So I'll be putting that jaw back in and recalibrating it up with that. Alright, so here's our jaws here. So this side here can be used for um, the tubular key. And you can open them up, yes. So these are initially what looks to be maybe two-sided jaws. So if I'm right, I think we go on one side and we can also go on the reverse side of the jaw as well. 
So there's your round tubular. At the top here you've got this little notch here as well. So you can actually put like a key in there, like your double sided key if you want, but it's not really the double sided type of thing, but I've noticed a lot of key machines do do that. Alright, so we can put that key in there, tighten it up, if we can do that, okay. And we could do the same on this side, so that would be one holding position. But it's very unusual what would be held on this side because it's got a V. I'll show you the, see that? That's the formation of the jaws. So it looks like you can hold something there and you can hold something there as well. So very interesting. I only wish the manual wasn't in Chinese so I could do it. So these jaws are designed to be slid out. I've got the indicator there and I've got the indicator there. They're using a track section so you just basically slide it on out. I'm going to put this grub screw back in before I lose it on the third one. So looking at the rest of the key machine here, we also have this uh, needle leveling. You see this here, needle leveling, and it will give you a battery meter and a charge state. So that's pretty cool because that allows you to know when your, um, when your probe or your guide is lower or higher than your cutter so you can adjust it, adjusting it with this micrometer type style up here. Okay so we've looked over this machine quite a little bit and to be able to translate this Chinese thing here I've had to use this app. You take a photo of it like that, be careful they try and catch you suck it into a subscription. Um, we didn't get the subscription on that but it was enough to translate it. So this this lever right here, and I have to explain this to you, uh, this one here that goes from up and down. What we've realized here is that the instructions are completely useless. Let me read them to you. The fine tuning includes a pre-positioning adjustment knob and guide pin fine tuning knob. That's what they're talking about here. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. It doesn't to me. A pre-positioning adjustment knob is placed in the up position. That's this thing. Uh, you can use this guide pin fine tuning knob to adjust the height of the guide pin and rotate the guide pin clockwise. Okay, so it doesn't really change the height when you do that. And I can move the micrometer up and down. Okay, so this makes no sense and I'll just read a little bit more. The pre-positioning ad adjustment knob is placed in the down gear the height of the guide pin is lower than the height of the milling cutter under action of spring. Okay, so look, let's just cut to the chase, okay? You see this knob right here? If I have it in the up position, when I pull down, when I pull down here, okay, I've got no spring action whatsoever, okay? So that's just your normal type deal. Okay, now if I want to cut something like a, a dimple key, I would bring this down and put it in the down position. Now when I bring my uh, cutter down, I've actually got a little bit of spring action. You ready? That's the spring action. Okay, so I'm calibrated there on that spring action. Now, if I bring it back up here, I put it down, I'm not calibrated. It needs to go down. So I'm just going to turn this knob just a little bit and there we go. Uh, uh, where did we go? There, perfect. So that means we're calibrated, that means we're charging, that's how much battery is in the charge. I want to mention something else as well. If you buy a Silco Matrix, it's a 240 volt machine. If you're using that out on the road or anywhere that you've got to move it band to van or anything like that, you've got to have mains power. This is battery power. So it changes the game. If you couple this up with their other single and double sided key machine, which is also battery powered, you can duplicate all the keys you need to duplicate. Not only that, with that tubular key function, it allows you to be able to duplicate tubular key machines. So that's another key machine now you don't have to carry. For mechanics or people in workshops who are going to cut a single and double sided key probably once, once a month, yes, you might be able to use that double sided key cutting function and actually cut yourself a double sided key. For real locksmiths and key cutters, I wouldn't advise it. I would simply just go out and buy the, the Dolphin X009, I think it is, which is a similar type platform and has the battery power, so you can do it all the same. Um, great little machine for what it is. I also wanted to say uh, one more thing about this machine as well, and that was on the side. Now, when you're traveling and all the rest, I'm not sure if this is a design this way, but it looks like it is, and it's another great design feature. You have this part up here to rest your fingers on, you know, give you some guide and some, you know, that sort of stuff. When you're moving around and it's rolling around in your van, good idea to bring this down here and lock it in, lock the whole carriage from moving. And you can also, it locks just like that as well, so now the whole thing is not going to 
basically if you didn't do that the carriage can still go forwards and backwards and bash around and you you break those little bump stops underneath when you're you know going over all the speed humps and things so by bringing that down on the side allows it to stay in position and that's a really really cool feature so um, for this machine um, looking at a few other things here that uh, I didn't uh, pick up first time round is it doesn't matter if you center this cradle here perfectly or not there's a little little zero down there and you can center it but it really wouldn't matter if you're off by a couple of millimeters because your cutter and your tracer are going to be exactly the same anyway and this carriage does move around so as long as you're in the middle there somewhere you're going to be fine the next thing I picked up too is when you use your allen key when you loosen it uh, here two big pins come in and they lock this sliding track into position which is a really great feature the amount of milling and precision and the design of this machine is excellent I I would compare it to a silker machine because it's just the quality is there the price is there too at a thousand bucks it's a lot better than a silker machine coming in at four or five thousand and it's more universal and compatible to take around or be in the back of your work van or on a on a bench the the footprint of it it's smaller and and it's just it's definitely definitely what you want there's one other point that I wanted to uh, mention uh, the actual finish on the knobs and all this sort of stuff just with that little lever is you know really well done the spring loaded function here as well I'll just loosen that off so you get that little spring in there that's really well done uh, uh, let's turn it on now let's see if there's any lights or anything oh yeah we've got lights Okay, so battery is there. We have a, a light underneath. Yes, we do. So that's really cool. That's what they did on the other key machines. And it helps you illuminate the key. So you can see that light there. That's cool. Um, everything else about the machine is pretty straightforward for most people who have used key machines. Of course, you've got this one and you've got your, like, your finger track on there. So you can just hold it and you've got something to kind of stabilize your hand with. This is just your plunge. You've got your handle on the back. It's completely carryable, carryable from you know one car to the next. Uh, let's turn it on. Sounds like a plane taking off. All right, max throttle. Wow. It really does sound like a turbo engine, but it's not, it's just a key machine. That's an interesting type of motor. Having a look over it so I can show you everything. Um, this one here would be locking our carriage. Let's have a go at that one. So which way do I do? That's gonna lock left and right. So let's see if that works. Yep, that works. I'm gonna loosen it off and I'm still locked. Okay. So let's try tightening that now. Okay, so if I tighten it, as you can see these two spring things, this is actually, like I can go forwards, left and right, but if I go, if I push into it, I'm using a spring. If I'm pushing in as well, I'm on a spring. I turn this here and I'm completely locked. I can only go forwards and backwards. So I guess while you're cutting, you'd probably have a little bit of spring motion in there. So, okay, um, the build on it, good. Paint works good. The bearings are sharp, all good. Nothing really to complain about. Looking underneath it now. Okay, so they've used good quality parts. The battery is located in there somewhere. They've put good bump stops on it. They did not include any fitting kit. So putting this into a van, um, I recommend you take the feet off. You make us put a piece of paper over it, make yourself a template, and then make up a couple of brackets so that that way you can bolt it onto the bottom of the machine and then just put some screws into your bench and away you go. One that we found out is those little two grub screws that are used for the spindle which are in here and you've got nowhere to put them and they're possibly going to be lost. We notice there's two holes on the side here. So you can actually just put them in there with a little bit of Loctite or something and they sit in there fine. So if you ever lose though, one of those ones, you've got your spare ones on the side of the machine. Would have been nice to, for them to put a couple more holes so that we can actually fit them down to the bench, but maybe on the next one. Okay, so one thing I would like to see this machine improve on, and they have improved when you, you buy the big 240 volt machine. If I can bring it up here. See down the bottom here? It will, it, there we go. It would be nice if there was a plastic tray to slide all these little bits in. You see all these little bits here? Sorry, the camera works not that good. So these little bits, these are all going to be floating around now or I've got to put them in a pencil case or something like that and they're all floating around. One of the other things I've noticed too is these little two little grub screws here, they're actually for your spindles. So make sure you keep them and you don't lose them. Also the other thing I notice is that when you drop this in the down position, it allows the spindle um, grub screw to be at the front so it's nice and easy to change. So that's looking at the Dolphin. Uh, XC or XP007 not a bad little machine and for what it is and for the prices this came in at under a thousand dollars kind of delivered so yeah I definitely definitely think it's a nice tidy machine even the little guards here as well give you some sort of protection 
you still need to wear safety goggles don't put your hand in there of course and don't spray it with anything or air spray it with anything but not a bad machine all, all said and done okay if you if you like this machine or use this machine leave it down below and leave your comments it's got a nice rubbery grip here too the logos in rubber everything's enclosed for no brass or anything getting in there so apart from the fitting kit I don't think there's much more you could want off a key machine like this and considering the alternative you buy a silker and it comes in about 4000 it's um, 240 volt this is a 12 volt 18 volt and you plug in the 240 adapter it's perfect for your van it's perfect for your shop you're doing markets anything you want to do because it's actually got a battery built in I think that's a really cool cool design to have a battery so it means we don't need an inverter in the vehicle that this vehicle is going in it can do you know maybe 20 keys and then we just plug it in at the end of the week and it'll be right for Monday okay that's our quick review on it there's a quick look over the jaws and that uh, tubular cutting machine is good. I mean, you can cut tubular on it, which saves you having a, to need to take a tubular key machine everywhere you go. It also allows a bit of room on the heads there. So possibly you might be able to cut some sort of Harley or um, motorcycle keys there where they've got the funny shape. Not too sure. Here's a, here's a standard blank anyway. With these key blanks here, we actually had some of the plastic heads as well. And we really struggled to be able to put them into the standard tubular cutter. So by having one that doesn't rely on the actual uh, top of the head of the key having to go into the, the the vice means that we can you know we can cut big chunky keys and the head of the shape of the key doesn't matter because they're plastic coated right, so let's just pop that one in there okay so you would need to line it up and there is a bit of room on that to put slightly larger ones on and then you would just simply plunge it all the way around so that's an added bonus you're not only cutting uh, car keys cut tubular keys on it too I wouldn't be cutting single and double sided keys on it, although I think it has some availability to, to do that using this one or this one up the top. A lot of the time on the other key machines I see they kind of just jam it in there and it's suspended like that. And uh, I mean it's doable, but you're not really going to start cutting keys that way, uh, you know, when you should be using a side cutting machine. So definitely a... Oh, there we go. There's a, there's, a, there's a key blade right there. Let's just throw that in and uh, show you how it is. So this is a double-sided jaw, which is interesting. I haven't seen on other key machines. Back there off. Back there off. And that's it. So that's what they're kind of expecting you to do, to put a double-sided um, double key in there and duplicate it. And you've got, your shot, you've got all these lines to align on your shoulder, or you could align it with the tip stop. Um, so there's a lot of alignment stuff in there. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it's all the way from here to here Plus you've got this top that top. So I like the jaws. There's nothing wrong with the jaws. I can say um, They've all got a little allen key in here a lot of these like little Tightening things. I don't know how they've put it all together But I could loosen them all and then I'll have to recalibrate it all so I'm going to avoid that I'm just going to put that back slide it back in line it up with my notch and I should be good all right, so there's my quick little rant on the on the machine. Leave your comments down in the description. Let's start it up again, because that's the cool bit. Ready? Oh, you've got to remove something before flight, don't you? <laughs> Here we go. Warming up the engine. Where is where's my engine? Oh, that's just the on button. Sorry. Here we go. Stewardess arm doors. <laughs> Taxi, runway left. Okay, we're going to do our pre-flight checks. All right, everyone seated. And take off, not bad, not bad. I'm gonna go have to give you a good charge before anything happens, but um, yeah. With a sound like that, you know, I'm a bit disappointed they uh, didn't call it something else. I and mean, they should have called it X-Horse DC, DC007 or something, you know, or uh, who knows, you know, uh, the, the Boeing 007, because it's, you know, the Dolphin, I don't know where that comes from, but. If anyone knows where the dolphin comes from, leave it down in the description because I really think it should have had a plane name. You can keep the 007, but the plane name would have been would have been better. Nice sound, but nice sound. Okay, thanks for watching.